Cisco, our partner, forecasts that all of these small technologies will, in fact, generate close to $14 trillion, $15 trillion in value over the next 10 years. A lot of it from these non-sexy clip art things like supply chain management, NASA utilization, and employee productivity, that are important to many of the companies here. But some of it from the innovation space. And I'm still waiting for the grand change to happen there. And so I look for it in this word. I think that today, the devices in our lives, all the things that we carry in our pockets and that we have in our spaces and build, they're not nearly as aware as they should be of where we are and what we're doing. And I think we can fix that if we make our environment a little bit more connected so that our devices make our lives frictionless. That's what really will change our lives. Now, the main topic I actually talk about at Singularity University is a manufacturing topic, but not directly. And yet it's one of the world's largest manufacturing industries, the $1.7 trillion automotive manufacturing industry, part of the $5 trillion personal ground transportation industry. That is about to get completely upended by the self-driving car. I worked on Google's car that you see here. And so I want to give you just a very small touch of facts about that to whet your appetite for what to think about this in the future. Now, by the way, everybody who's working on this is going at it mostly to think about saving lives. 1.2 million people are killed around the world in car accidents, and that is one of the world's greatest diseases if it were a disease. And we have the potential to change that and change it around the world. And so this is what's driving people to go forward. But the consequences to everything else are going to be huge. And in fact, that entire automobile manufacturing industry is up for grabs. And I believe other industries can be as they are digitized, which is why I want you to learn a little bit about this one. The energy industry, believe it or not, is also changed because as people move towards buying cars by the ride instead of buying cars as cars, buying the manufactured product as a service instead of as a manufactured product, suddenly all the buying decisions about it change. People don't go to a car dealer looking for the car they're going to own for five years. They pick up their phone looking for the car they're going to use for 10 minutes, the way they do with Uber. And suddenly they don't care about the energy, the brand, the suppliers. All the old rules of that giant manufacturing industry are upended when it becomes digital. And we see two different approaches between the companies applying this. The Car companies are taking a traditional manufacturer's approach. They're taking the cars they make, and they're adding computers to them, hoping to improve them and make them drive themselves. It's an evolutionary approach. But the non-car companies, the high-tech companies, they're taking computers and sticking wheels under them to see what happens. A revolutionary approach that works at the innovation pace of the computer industry for very different results. Now, there are going to be a lot of winners and losers in this space, but I believe the winners will not be the manufacturing companies, but rather the people who own the customer and provide that service. And this will happen in cars, and it will happen in your industry soon if you do not become aware of the way it becomes digitized. I finally want to mention, sorry, I want to mention one other thing. The big change here is that the car, the engine is no longer the most important part of it. The computer is the most important part of it. And while the engine and the other parts of the car aren't on the Moore's Law curve, that computer and software are, and everything we tell you today and all those exponential charts suddenly apply to an industrial industry that has no idea of how to deal with it. Now, one last little touch I'll tell you that I'm also working on, which will change all sorts of goods, is the ability to build delivery robots rather than self-driving cars. I work with a company in Europe, and we have built these robots, which run on the sidewalks. They're going to be able to bring you anything in 30 minutes, not just a pizza. Now, it's easier to do because you can't kill a pizza, and so the safety problems are simpler than carrying passengers. But these robots will be able to bring you anything in 30 minutes, order five pairs of shoes, try them on, throw four back in the robot and send it back. That, home, that retail store experience in your home will suddenly allow us to consider what the meaning of retailing is and even what the meaning of ownership of manufactured goods is. Because if you can get anything in 30 minutes, as this technology promises, for under a dollar, do you need to own things? All right? There are many things in your life that you may decide you don't need to own when goods move as quickly as data. In fact, I was going to use the name Internet of Things for this, but somebody went and stole it for something else. So big changes coming from robots, from computers, and from the digitization of all the products you make and the transportation that carries them. And so watch out for the future very much. Thank you.